Well, thank you, Greg. I'm going to do my best to pick up a little bit of time. Um, so delighted to be here. I think we all would agree that this is one of the most exciting times to be in our industry, and media specifically is extremely exciting. Let me put this in context for you. If you look at the accelerating rate of change, and you all know these numbers, uh, globally it took 38 years for the telephone to reach 50 million users. It took TV about 12. It took the iPad less than two. So this is the world that we all operate in. Incredible opportunity if we do it well. And I do think this is the golden age of media where we will look back at how we adapted to this and hopeful that we will be very proud of our response. The next 20 minutes, I want to spend uh, in two ways. The first is I want to talk about four areas. When preparing for this, I looked at the work that the IPG Emerging Media Lab has done and picked four different um, studies or learnings that I thought would be especially appropriate for this, and then married up either case studies or a concept with it. Secondly, I want to talk about um, how I believe clients and agencies in the future need to drive a, a better sense of alignment um, and a couple of thoughts around that. So let me start with um, the idea of total mediation. We have um, worked in partnership with one of our largest global clients, Microsoft, uh, to do studies around this idea of continued fragmented consumer attention. This is not about multitasking. As you all know, it goes much further beyond that. Uh, Linda Stone, who's a researcher at Microsoft, coined the phrase continued partial attention. And this is that always on crisis that we all live with now. It's actually changing the way in which our brains are wired. We are in this constant state of tiny attention spurts, tiny bursts of information taking away our attention. It requires us to develop immersive and empathetic communication styles that are different than what we've done in the past. The reality is it's also uh, eradicating boredom. Think about the last time you were in a cab or standing in a coffee line um, or waiting looking, uh, hopefully, at the HSBC ads on the global airport jetways and not looking at your BlackBerry. We all do it. We are all motivated to quickly look at a device and be um, distracted by that in many ways. There's literally no time in our lives that's not mediated. So how we, how we communicate within this is very important. And I wanted to share a case from, uh, and some of you may have seen this, it's a case from Thailand. Uh, it's with our sister agency, MRM. And it's Chevrolet and how they took advantage of this notion of time being eradicated uh, and boredom being eradicated and how they engage with consumers on a street corner. The second uh, topic that I wanted to cover is the notion of the, our ability to program the planet. Objects and places are now being tagged, as you know, with content uh, that can be accessed through QR codes, virtual reality, and our mobile devices. We have the ability to today to literally tag infinitely almost every object you can imagine <laughs> on this globe. Not yet over in space, but in this globe. Um, the expansion of the IPv6 codes, for those of you who follow internet protocol, um, IPv4 allowed us to tag almost four trillion objects. That has now been upgraded over the last 18 months, and now literally it's infinite how many objects can be tagged. If consumers can tag objects, then we have the opportunity, obviously, to program that with content. I wanted to share a very fun case uh, that we had discovered from uh, Singapore, DDB. It has been on some of the circuits here in terms of awards, so you may have seen it. But the reason why I pulled it is because it's a really innovative case, I believe, in taking RFID and tagging it to clothing and making the content music. So what you'll see is as the shoppers go into a dressing room, they have tags attached to the clothes that have uh, the ability to change the music. So you really create a different vibe, depending on the type of clothing article that's being purchased. Take a look.
Sing on you. So that case was for Star Hub Music Online, which their intent obviously was to drive downloads. And if you liked the song that was playing, you could quickly send a text and get that, and it drove a lot of downloads. It's a fascinating case. The third topic that I wanted to uh, talk about of the four is human behavior as media. Imagine your behavior creating data that can actually fuel a media experience. Um, Quentin George, who has spoken at the festival many times and runs our Emerging Media Lab, has been focused on several different new products that um, allow us to do this. This device here is called Fitbit. There's another one from Jawbone called Up. They're both similar in that you attach this device to your belt loop, or in the case of Up, it's just a bracelet that you wear. And that device measures your steps, your breathing, sleeping patterns, overall activity ratio. In the case of UP, you can actually take photos of the food that you eat and after that determine how you feel. So it begins to catalog um, your reaction to different foods and how that marries up with the activity that you might have had that day. The aggregate data can be accessed through APIs and application developers can actually then program different apps and benefits to you and users can automatically update their Facebook page with their activity of the day. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily do that, but I think it's fascinating. The lab has been watching this because we're waiting for a point where there's enough consumers engaged in this where brands could actually benefit by adding a layer of value. So think about how Weight Watchers or Gatorade or New Balance could actually engage in a really different way um, with this combination of human experience and interaction as well as obviously the use of technology with that. Something certainly to watch. There's not a case here yet because it hasn't been done yet. Uh, the fourth topic I wanted to talk about is commercial layer versus commercial break. This is one of the lab trials that we did in the past year where we wired 50 people with biometric trackers and we watched their behavior as they viewed uh, typical commercials. Not surprising, this won't surprise any of you. We found that uh, in a fully mediated world where they have lots of devices at their fingertips as they watch, they tend to switch gears when the commercial break comes. 63% of the time, they were not fully attentive at the point of the commercial break, only retaining their attention 37% of the time. Not a surprise when there was uh, a layer or an inter a, a layered com commercial break or some level of integration, this improved dramatically to 50%, 13% improvement. We also have done our own studies at UM where we've actually found that with um, specific content done custom for a brand, we've seen improvements of seven times on average. So we've seen as much as 35, 40 time improvement. On average, it was seven times. So we're a big believer in this. I wanted to share um, a case from uh, UM Hong Kong that really showcases this, where we took um, Coke and we created an interactive experience uh, with a game called Catch the Cap. I like to teach the Generations have pried open Coke bottle caps, anxious to discover if a prize was printed inside. This wasn't just an exercise in shifting more product, this was a chance for everyone to open happiness. So, is it possible for us to reinvent this classic experience for the digital age? With recent advances like 3D TV and motion control gaming, we believed we could take a traditional TVC and make it transformational. Three simple steps to grab your caps. One. Download the iPhone app in an instant. Two, chill out in front of the TV till our TVC plays. Three, once you see the caps flying, catch them virtually on your phone with a flick of your wrist. Thanks to smartphone sound detection and accelerometer technology, we launched Hong Kong's first commercial that actually let you catch Coke bottle caps out from the TV. Use your phone app to catch tumbling caps and win instant prizes, discounts, mobile games, exclusive virtual collectibles, possibly the world's most advanced integration of digital with TV. The campaign was supported by a wide range of channels, including Cinema, Outdoor TV, MTR Poster, Magazine, Ads in Search Engine and Social Media. It was a smash. The app hit the number one download spot in the charts just 15 hours after launch. Within five weeks, the app had been downloaded over 390,000 times. 
and the game had been played up to 9 million times with daily plays of up to 400,000. You can imagine how many people got to see our TVC. Online social discussion increased by 218%. Penetration of Coca-Cola among teens increased from 78% last year to 83%. Opening happiness at ever greater heights. We love that case because it's such a great example of how you can really create a very different experience um, and engage consumers in a very different way. So those are the four topics I thought would be helpful to put some context around. Continuous partial attention, programming the planet, human behaviors, media, and then that commercial layer versus the commercial break. I want to now talk about, um, you know, as fundamentally as consumers are changing, it obviously requires us as agency partners and clients to operate differently as well. And in some cases, I find our assembly lines are a little bit dated. You know, you think about the need to respond as quickly as we want to, and, and in some cases, our processes and our planning timely simply don't allow that. So I wanted to focus on some of the things that we are doing at UM in order to improve that. And for me, it falls under a very powerful headline of alignment. And there's two ways I wanted to talk about that. The first is alignment with our consumers. So the idea of the perfect alignment with audience, message, and medium. We talk about this all the time, certainly not a new concept, but I envision a day where our planning cycles literally go from months to a day, where we're optimizing in real time based on what we see as working and driving the business results that our clients require. When conversations are happening right now in the social sphere can impact and change the creative that we deliver this afternoon. That's, for me, what, what is where we need to be heading. And we have a lot more opportunity to do that than we've ever had before with the investment in data, um, the harnessing that data for the rich insight that you saw in an example like the Coke example, defining the triggers that help us do scenario planning so we can think much more proactively about how we might want to um, react quickly, investing in custom content teams to do the level of integration and overlays that really can't be done without very different talent within the agency, and then obviously measuring everything we do in order to determine how it's driving those business results. This investment leads me to my second point, which is alignment of goals uh, with clients and ultimately with media owners. I know this sounds really easy when you put it up on a slide, but I find this to be one of the hardest things to do, and I think most clients in the room would agree with me, because that idea of perfect alignment around goals and what has to be accomplished is, in, in essence, where success lies. Typically, agencies have a portion of their incentive, obviously, tied to uh, results, but in my opinion, that those items are typically softer metrics than what we can ultimately strive for. They tend to be around agency evaluation and upper funnel metrics. It's my hope at UM that we push that a lot further, and we tie to very specific business outcomes like share and sales. Last year, we worked with McKinsey to do a lot of benchmarking across a lot of different industries in order to find where the best practices were and where the different models were. We looked at everything from construction to hedge fund managers to legal firms and everything in between. And from that work, we have a focused approach now on defining the risk and determining how deeply we can uh, erode what would be a normal fee in order to align more closely to the business results that we must deliver for our clients. I firmly believe that the data that we have today, there's an opportunity that exists to measure everything we do and never have to wonder what part of the budget's working and not. We know it works, we can prove it, and I believe our compensation should ultimately be much more tied to that on behalf of our clients so that all of our teams wake up each day motivated by the ultimate end goal of that client versus the, the marketing proxies that we've used in the past. So that's just a couple of things that we're working on at UM to help illustrate that and drive to a better future.